Hey, it's Rebecca here and I'm really excited to be sharing my first design team layout for Hip Kit Club today. I'm working with the August 2021 kit and my assignment today was to use the main kit only. So I was immediately drawn to this beautiful um, colourful mandala paper from Paige Evans Wonders collection. So I took some time whilst watching the telly one evening and fussy cut all of those out and I wanted to make a feature of them so I'm going to arrange them around a circular photo. So some of them are full mandalas, some of them are just half where they were kind of at the edge of the 12 by 12. So I've used a mixture, um, just picking out colours that I liked the most and I'm going to tuck them underneath my photo like you see on the screen now. Um, and I've distressed all the edges of those mandalas. I absolutely love to have loads of dimension and textures on my layout. So I quite often distress the edges of everything. Uh, and I'll use whatever I've got closest to me, either my distressing tool or my scissor blade um, to do that distressing. Um, and I'm obviously to add a bit more texture and dimension, I'm going to try and curl up all the, um, the points on these mandalas. So the tool I'm using here is a, an icing tool that I use when I'm icing cakes. Um, obviously I don't use this exact one anymore, it's found its way into my craft room. Um, and it's now just dedicated to scrapbooking. Um, but I'm using that, just putting the end on each of those points and curling the paper up around it. And then once those are all in place with some foam underneath, that will bring loads of dimension and texture to my layout. And just make it a bit more interesting to look at really. So you saw me with a the ruler there. I've just found the center point of the 12 by 12 cardstock. Um, just so I could place my photo there and now I'm going to arrange those mandalas around the outside. I'm just using double sided tape, to, um, just one tiny bit to tack those into place and then I will raise those pointed edges up onto foam a bit later on. I'm also going to raise my photo up onto foam that helps for me to make my photo kind of the, the focal point of the layout um, I always raise my photos up onto foam quite often when you've got busy pattern papers or a busy layout um, the photo can get lost on your page so by raising it up on foam I find it really helps to draw the eye to the photo and I'm going to get my title stuck in place before I do anything else. I'm quite undecided at this point what else I'm going to add. So I want to get that in place so I know there's space for it. And I'm just titling my layout Fort Victoria. That's the location on the Isle of Wight where this photo was taken. So we were on holiday and they've got a lovely beach there. It's an old fort. Um, used back in war times probably. I don't really know the history of it, how terrible is that? But um, we love to go there, my little boy loves it. Um, especially this year, because we found loads of crabs there, um, which is his favorite thing to do at the moment, searching for crabs. So those alphas come in the main kit. They are by Simple Stories. They are from um, the, one of the color vibes and they are foam alphas in orange that you get in the kit. Um, and I've put the word fort above my photo and Victoria below, kind of tried to center them as best I can. Um, I've only stuck the very edge of the alphas to my photo. They are quite sticky, these alphas, so they will hold, but I didn't want the rest stuck to those mandalas. I wanted those kind of hanging free and then they kind of curl up with the mandalas to add a bit more texture. Um, so like I said, just added uh, just the tiniest overlapping bit of the alphas to my photo. So now I've got the main kind of design element um, of my layout in place, I'm going to work on kind of embellishing and adding more to the page. So this paper here is from Vicky Bootin's Colour Study collection. It's an absolutely stunning collection. There's a few papers from that collection in the August main kit. Um, I couldn't decide if I wanted to add a complete 12 by 12 border around the edge of my layout or do something else. Um, and in the end, I've settled on just adding a strip either side. Um, they're about half an inch wide. So I've just cut those from the same colors and I'm uh, gonna have one either side of the layout so that the colors kind of mirrored on either side. Um, I really love symmetry. Um, so it was important to me that the colors kind of worked. So I've got a nice pink bit on the left there and I'll have a pink bit on the right um, and so on. You can kind of see it a bit better there. 
So I've distressed those edges and got those stuck in place with double-sided tape. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to bring in any more of these mandalas, but I don't want to make it too busy. I am a lover of white space on layouts. I don't like to overcrowd the page, um, and I'm definitely a kind of less is more kind of scrapper. Um, I trial out some of these puffy stickers from the Amy Tangerine Brave and Bold collection. Um, there was one that said True Story and I was really drawn to it because I loved the colours in it but it just wasn't really working, I couldn't find a place for it so that didn't make it in the end. I'm adding now um, some tiny little um, kind of florals or mandalas, they're from that page Evans paper as well. Um, I literally have fussy cut everything from that page, the large mandalas, the smaller ones and then these kind of little flowers, um, almost like geometric flowers. I'm just going to arrange some of those around the outside edge. I've tried to um, kind of keep the colours grouped together. So I've put the pink flower near the pink mandala and the blue one up by the blue and green one. And then I've added in some of the puffy stickers from that Amy Tangerine Brave and Bold collection. Um, apologies, there's a bit of glare on my screen up the top there. Um, you can't really see the colours of those really well. But I've added some of the flowers in and just kind of cascading vertically down the centre of my page. And I felt like I wanted to bring a bit more orange to the page because I've got those orange alphas. So this is another patterned paper by Vicky Booten. I've cut two strips off. Um, unintentionally, one of them is wider than the other. So it does get stuck down. And then um, off camera at the end, I end up trimming it down to make it a bit more symmetrical, just so it's a bit more pleasing on the eye. But I just wanted to draw in a bit more of that orange. And there's some black numbers on the um, that triangle paper that I've used um, for the first strip. So I really liked this paper because it had the orange on it and the black and white stripe. So it just brought a bit more of that black in as well. So I've cut slightly thinner strips of this one and I'm going to get them stuck in. And I'm gonna have one um, with the orange section at the top. And then on the other side, I'm gonna have it the opposite way so that I've got the orange at the bottom. Just trying to spread the orange out um, and disperse it around the page a bit better rather than having kind of all the orange at the top or bottom. Um, so you'll see in a minute when I stick that down, I've got the orange kind of going diagonally um, across the page this way. And like I said, this strip is slightly thicker or wider than the other side. So um, I do trim that down and then have to uh, go about distressing it again at the end. So I want to add some splatters to my layout. I love to add splatters, um, usually either white, black or gold. Um, on this layout, I'm going to go with white. Um, I'm using white gesso and I just water that down a little bit. Um, I'd obviously used a dirty paintbrush the first time I tried it because my <laughs> gesso turned grey. Um, so I had to do that again. But yeah, that's just white gesso. And I find that works better than my white acrylic paint because it sits on the surface better. So it stays a truer white. Whereas my white acrylic paint kind of soaks into the cardstock and takes on the colour of the pattern paper behind it. So I prefer to use my gesso. So I've just added some white splatters to the centre of my page and also to those coloured strips either side. And then I'm going to finish off my layout on camera with some of these Say It In Crystals by Prima Marketing. And they're kind of like textured domes. You get orange and a minty green colour. And you also get some blue and cream ones that have like gold foil or gold leaf in and they are super pretty, really sparkly. So I've just added a few of those in amongst those um, Amy Tan puffy stickers and also to the centre of my mandalas. Um, you'll hopefully see the foil showing up in the close-ups. Um, and then off camera, I'm going to add a couple of lines of white stitching down the edges of my layout across those pattern paper strips. I love to add machine stitching to my layout. It brings in kind of another texture, another material to the page, um, which just makes it a bit more interesting to look at. Um, so that's my layout finished today. Thank you very much for joining me for my, for my first DT layout. Really excited to be here. And massive thanks to Kimberly and Kim for having me. Um, I will leave you with the rest of the close-ups and in my description box below you will find the links to the HipKit page, the HipKit Facebook group um, and also the sign-up page. So thanks very much for joining me. I'll leave you with the rest of my close-ups.